much for being a YouTube member of Fat Quarter Shop. Um, we truly appreciate it. It helps us um, get all of our equipment. And so I came up with a really cute idea today to use triangles on a roll and scraps. And the reason I was thinking about it is Lori's brand new book, Scrappiness is Happiness, is about to come out. And I was proofing the book and I was really kind of comparing how I compare how I store my scraps a little bit differently than the way Lori does. And I thought, well, we should show you know something using the way I store my scraps because I am going to have to use these up at some point. So I'm gonna show you um, how I store my scraps. And then in Lori's book, she's gonna show you hers. And the main difference is we do a little bit different on the sizes. And she also stores strips where I only store squares. So I keep mine labeled on the front. And I keep one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half and six and a half. And these are when I'm completely done with the project. I've been storing them, I guess about a year. So you're gonna see all different types of designers, all kind of colors. And this is like from last year. And these are all starched. That's also a difference. Lori doesn't starch her fabric. So mine are starched. And I kinda need to start sewing these up at some point into something. So. We came up with this cute idea. So there's, you see a mix of designers. That's my five and a half. And then I'll show you my four and a half. And obviously I have more of the smaller sizes because you can get, I just basically take whatever chunk I can at the end. And it's kind of fun looking at the scraps because I can tell in my head what quilt they went with and it's fun because I've got lots of different colors and what I do is I have this little bucket and I just cut when I'm done with say I've done a quilt this is with my flea market quilt and when I was done with the flea market quilt on the video I used my creative grid square rulers which are the two and a half to six and a half so CGR2 CGR3 CGR4, CGR5, and CGR6. The one and a half I have to cut down from a two and a half inch square, but I cut all my squares, put them in this basket, and then when it gets about halfway full, I call um, one of my kids and I say, hey, who wants to earn $5? Or, you know, whatever amount that I have for the day. And they put them in here, they take them from here, and they figure out what size, and they put them in here. So we're gonna do a crumb quilt today. And the one box that I have that hardly has anything is my poor little CGR1 box. And the reason why is I just started collecting these. For some reason, I thought, you know, I have an odd number of boxes. So let's add the one and a half. So that's the only one that's poor, pitiful, doesn't have any room. So these are my boxes right here. And I have them in my, um, in like a little, um, like a little hutch and my kids know where they're at so they know to fill them up and so what we did is we tested this on a couple of different triangles on a roll paper and we decided H300 is the best one to use so I'm gonna set this aside because we're not gonna use those sizes but I did want to let you know we have this half square triangle cheat sheet and it's really really great if you're working with any kind of pattern and it doesn't list what triangles on a roll you need, you would just look at your cut size. So if you're looking at, for example, a fig tree pattern, for example, and they tell you to cut a one and seven eighth inch square, or if she says cut a two inch square and trim down, you know this is your cut size this will be your unfinished size before you sew it into your block. And then this would be the triangles on a roll paper size you would need, which matches here. So we have a guide that has your cut size, your finished size, your unfinished size, and what paper to use. And I have this in a notebook. I, I mean, I honestly have this memorized, but I do have it in a notebook in my sewing room so that if I ever need to get to it, I can get to it. And along with that, I have our 
um, different guides on setting. There's a, We have a guide for this for setting and corner squares. I keep all of that in there, so if I ever need it, it's already in my little notebook. So this is just a little cheat if you need it. So what we did is we came up with three different things. So we cut some one and a half inch squares, which also tells you where all my one and a half inch squares went. So we've got eight by eight. So we have 64 one and a half inch squares sewn together. And you can see we have all different designers all mixed in. So we've got like Fig Tree, Lori, um, Bonnie and Camille, Lori. This is um, Sweetwater, Cory Yoder. So all different designers. This is um, Vanessa Gertzen. And like I said, we're going to use three inch triangle paper. So that's H300. We tried it and the other ones are a little bit too small and your crumb quilt's going to look a little funny. So what you're going to do is choose a background that will contrast enough and give negative space from your scraps. So um, we picked 20708-36. That's the dot that I use on a lot of quilts. It is, um, I keep it by the bolt. So I have that one and I think that white looks good with, with all of these. And you know, you can see there is some cream in some of the fabrics, but I think the white will make it pop. And we're gonna put them right sides together. That's really important. And then when you lay this paper down, you don't want your <clears throat> you don't want your solid line to be on the line of any type of seam, or you're gonna have a lot of funniness when you um, cut it out. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of look, and I don't want that line right there. So I'm gonna move it a little bit to the right, and then I'm gonna make sure this line is not on the seam. And you can either sew with the white on top or the squares on top. I'm gonna use the squares on top because that way I can just make sure that my lines aren't meeting. So this is our first option which is eight squares by eight squares, so 64 squares, one and a half inch, sewn together, pressed open. Now, because we're using the H300 at the end, all of these are gonna come out the same block size. And so this is my H100, sorry, these are my one and a half inch squares with my H300 on top. And you can see I just roll the paper out, cut directly on that line. Our second option is two and a half inch squares. So this one, you can sew together four by four if you want. We cut ours just a little bit bigger. And the reason we did that is before you saw, we had to put it right on that end. Here, we can kind of go anywhere. So I'm gonna kind of put it, I don't want that right in the middle. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the right and when I trim this down, it will trim to where it's gonna have a straight edge. And then I can save this part for the next time I do this by just adding to it. So these are two inch, two and a half inch squares, the same thing on top, H300. And I made sure my white on white is touching. So right sides together. And you're gonna see how cool this looks at the end because all my squares are gonna come out the same size and it's just gonna give you a different look. The third one is three and a half inch squares. And this one, we did 15 three and a half inch squares. And you can see we just sewed them together, press them open, and you'll see at the end why you need to press open. And then this one, I'll kind of move like this so I can stay away from my seams. And this is gonna give you a really cool crumb quilt. So I'm gonna keep all these and then at the end of the year, I'm gonna put a quilt together using this somehow. And I'll show you kind of some different layouts. And you'll notice when we sewed our squares together, we just sewed them all random. So we didn't put, you know, designers together. We just, whatever came out of the box is what we did. So the key to working 
with the triangles on a roll is to keep everything nice and flat. So when you're working today, I'm going to show you, I put a bed on my machine. And the reason why is I want this to stay nice and flat. You don't want any puffiness in your paper when you're done or your triangles are going to come out the wrong size. You're going to stitch on the dotted line, stitching as close to that dotted line as you can with the shorter stitch length. So if you normally use a 2.0 stitch length, you would use a 1.5. I usually use a 1.5 stitch length, which is already pretty low. So then I do like a 1.2. And the reason you do that is the paper is going to pull off easier. And so what we're going to do is sew on those lines and we're going to get... We're gonna get 28 total half square triangles and I'm gonna show you how you can lay those out. And we're also gonna cut directly on the line. Now, before I go sew, I'm going to just make sure I've got my white right sides together and we're gonna go sew. So again, I'm gonna make my stitch length 1.2. I have an open toe foot and the reason I have that is so I can see where my needle is and you can see I have this bed that's flat. It's gonna keep it nice and flat. So I'm going to start stitching a little bit off the paper and then stitch a little bit past the paper. That way when I pull out my stitches, they won't, they won't rip out. my stitch length might be a little too tight there. So I'm going to pull the pins out and what I'm going to do is before I go over here I'm going to do a nice flat flattening to keep my paper flat and straight and keep sewing. And then before I start over here, I'm going to flatten. So when I'm done with the page, I just kind of make sure I don't miss any lines, you know, like I didn't forget one of the lines and just move to the next paper. You pull the pins out and flatten. Cause you can see it kind of bubbles up so if you just flatten it, you're going to get a better result.
Okay, I went off of the line a little bit, so I'm gonna redo that. Just make sure I've sewn on all the lines. And then I'll do my last one. then we'll go cut them apart. So from here, you just wanna cut on the solid lines and I prefer to cut on the outside lines first. And you'll notice when I was sewing, I was really flattening the triangle paper. And the reason why is these all have seams. And normally when you're using triangle paper, you just have two fabrics with no seams in them, but there's a lot of seams in this, so that's why I was flattening. You don't usually have to do that that much. And from here, I'm just gonna cut apart. And when I'm using triangle paper, I just use the same rotary cutter. Some people do have one for when they cut fabric and one when they cut paper, but I use triangles on a roll all the time, so there would be It'd be really lost if I had to keep up with two rotary cutters. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the paper off. There's a couple of ways. I'm just, on this one, I'm gonna crease and then see how it just comes right off. And right there, somehow I didn't get all the way. So I'm gonna go fix that in a second. So I'll set this one aside because I need to fix that one. Now this, if you wanted to use it again, you could cut three squares from the one and a half on these two and put those in your one and a half inch bucket and then 
This is basically using up every little inch of fabric that you have, and it's gonna make a cute little crumb quilt. Just cut directly on those lines. one did the same thing so I must not have it threaded right that one did the same thing and that doesn't usually happen so that just means that in my machine I probably have something a little bit off in my bobbin like the bobbins not percent or something that would be what you call user error and I'm just keeping my stack right here because I'm gonna throw it all in the trash at one time I'll put these aside to save my one and a half inch squares from in a second Now this would be really fun if you like did them by color. So if you did like a whole patch of just pink and a whole patch of, and I'm gonna save these too, um, a whole patch of like all pink, all navy, you could do it by color. And the reason we're using H300 is you need the square to be big enough. It would also look good with H400, but I would definitely not go any smaller. And this is just a fun way to use up your scraps with triangles on a roll. And it's gonna give you the look of a cheater cloth. Same thing happened there. So I just have, let's see, these all look good. These, I'm just missing a couple of stitches. So I have something threaded wrong on my machine, but I'm not gonna unthread it right now. What I'm gonna do is just stitch over this and I'll fix that later. So since you used a tight stitch length, you can see where the stitches should go. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron all of these. And what I'm going to do first is set my seam with the white on top. 
press towards the white. Then I'm going to cut all the dog ears off and then I'm going to press open. Now, if you end up with a design that's like a pinwheel where all the whites will nest, you can leave them pressed towards the white. But I'm going to show you a couple of different layouts and some of them require pressing open. So I'm just going to press these open. And you can start seeing like how they look different. All of them are looking different. So those are the one and a halfs. These are the two and a halfs. So your one and a halfs are going to end up looking scrappier. Your three and a halfs are gonna look less scrappy. So you could do all the same size. You could do different sizes. The reason I'm doing a lot of different sizes is I wanna be able to use up all of my boxes of scraps and if I only use some of the small ones I would be out of those. Okay, so if I cut off my dog ears now, I cut twice. If I press open first, and you might need to let it sit about seven seconds because it's a lot of seams. If you cut now, you gotta cut four times. So you just wasted a little bit of a few seconds. So what I'm gonna do is take all of these squares. I'm going to trim the dog ears off and then we're gonna press them open and then I'm gonna show you some different layouts.
then I'm just gonna press open. I always press to one, if I'm gonna press open, I always press to one side and then press open later. And the reason I do that is I'm less likely to burn myself. The iron gets really hot. So if it's already hot from pressing to one side, and you can use a clapper on these and the clapper will make everything lay nice and flat. And the clapper only works if they're hot. So kind of lay them all and just put the clapper on there. Sometimes I wonder what I did without that project, without that. And it's gonna be fun for you to see once I get all of these done. We're gonna mix and match them a little bit, the sizes, and you'll see the fun look that it gives. So I finished my brick house quilt actually this weekend. So after this, this is gonna be one of my scrap quilts for the rest of the year. And then I also have a Lori Holt one that I'm going to be doing from her new book. And it's gonna use up a lot of my scraps. And you'll notice when you get to these one and a half inch squares, you have to really press because there's so many seams right there. So it's a little bit harder on the smaller squares, but you're gonna get a better look. So you might have to leave the iron on that a little bit longer, but you can see it goes real flat. And I am using steam. I always use steam, but I always starch before, so everything is already pre-shrunk. So now I've got them all ironed. I'm gonna move a couple things off the table. And I'm just gonna lay them out. 
and we'll zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to try to mix and match the different sizes so that I don't, so like I have small. So what you could do is a quilt like this. Let's see, I'll do five by five. That might be too many. Do four by five. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different layouts. And you can see like, you're gonna see the same fabric because in. Okay. So I'm not going to use all of them, but I'm just going to show you five by five. So let me neaten it so you can kind of see. So this would be kind of like just straight half square triangles. Like if you were just doing a quilt that had half square triangles all going the same way. And what's fun about this is when you look at it, it is totally scrappy. So you've got, these are like one and a half. These are the two and a half, and then these are the three and a half. So you can pick the look you want. And like I said, you could do all the squares one color. That's one option. So that's option one. My option two is going to be where you would definitely need to have pressed open because when you put these together, you'll need it pressed open. The previous one, you don't need to press open. And this one I'm gonna show a little bit different, let's see. So this is kind of like um, square and a square kind of, or not square and a square, um, it just kind of creates a little circle. I can't think of the name of it, but you could do this. And that'd be really cute. And you could do any size quilt you want with this, just as many as you can make. So you could make it a king, you could make it a crib, you could make it a table runner. So that's another option. A third option would be, let's see, we can try pinwheels. So I'm gonna actually move all these and then try again. And we do have a code for you. All the descriptions are in the box for a coupon on all sizes of triangles on roll paper. That's your benefit for this week or this month. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to do these in a pinwheel. It's gonna be a little bit harder. This is probably the one that I like the best because it really just looks like a crumb quilt. It just looks scrappy without even trying to look scrappy. So this is my favorite option. So I think I'm doing it right. And then another thing you could do is you could add sashing between if you really wanted them to look like a pinwheel. So I'm trying to make them pinwheels, it's kind of hard. Let's see. But I think this would be really cute with, um, if I did this, I'd probably put some sashing between it so that really the scrappiness will really stand out more. And then um, now we can do like an arrow. We're gonna try an arrow and see how that comes out. So we can do an arrow that way. And then this would be really cute. What I would do with this, maybe this is gonna be my favorite now. With this, what I would do though, I have to like really think. 
Now with this, what I would do is I would do rows of them and I would just go straight up and down. Or you could do zigzag rows like this and that's gonna give you like a zigzag. So there are some options. So I'm just gonna put all these, um, I'm gonna show you a little bit, one more, just how it would look in rows. But adding sashing to something like this will allow your blocks to stand out a little bit more. So I definitely would recommend when you start doing this that you um, add some sashing. The possibilities on this are endless though, so we want you to play with them, have fun, and remember you could do all pink, all red, all green, all blue. You could do a ton of stuff with this. So you'll definitely want to um, watch my Friday live streams because I will definitely be showing you um, what I end up doing with mine. And I think you're gonna love uh, the options, but I am gonna use H300. And I think you're gonna love what I come up with. And of course, if I do a certain setting, um, I'll tell you exactly what I do. But thank you so much for being a member and definitely use our uh, Triangles on a Roll coupon and have a great month and I'll see you next month. Bye.